Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the one and only Untamed Strength, Alan Thrall. We visited his meet last weekend, uh, Vacaville, California, USPA meet. Uh, and we just want I just want to chat with Alan, pick his brain, uh, give you guys a little bit of thoughts on uh, powerlifting meets in general and maybe how his meet went. And just kind of overall theme being that, one, powerlifting is about showing up and performing like any other sport. <laughs> Two, uh, being a good coach, a good lifter, having, you know, even if you hypothetically had all the knowledge in the world, which is impossible, on strength, conditioning, powerlifting, or peaking, uh, you can still have bad days, bad meets, bad training cycles. Uh, there's too many variables in life. And then three, programming, coaching, meets, all of that kind of being just a um, general toolbox, right? You got this big old toolbox, the smarter you get, the more experience you get, you get a bigger toolbox. It's just when and how to apply those tools, uh, whether it is your training, meet, et cetera. So Alan, maybe start out, uh, just tell us how the last couple of weeks of training went, uh, good, bad, general, and then how meet day went. This whole training block leading up to the meet was uh, great. I hit uh, PRs on all the lifts, uh, repetition <laughs> PRs, singles um, so everything was going as planned uh, and the last couple weeks leading up to it were as it as it should be um, at like any other meet uh, nothing out of the ordinary um, and then yeah me uh, I'll let you kind of yeah. hide it from there but nothing nothing that was like uh, uh, noteworthy good or bad yeah, yeah I think uh and that kind of depends. You've already worked with your coach for maybe a year now, so mm -hmm. you guys both have a vibe of each other, training styles, training programs. Uh, there's common themes on you know the internet that people say one way or the other, and everyone gets all culty on how you should prep. Some people are like, well, if you're not dying a week out, you're not mm -hmm. ready. Obviously, some fatigue should be there, so you might feel a little tired the last month of training, right. but you probably shouldn't feel like you're dying. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you shouldn't feel like Superman either until the week of, uh, or hopefully the day of, right? That's If you have a perfect peak, doesn't really matter what happened before, but you're Superman day up, yeah. right? Um, but those things get different. So what's uh, maybe the, the heaviest singles you hit in training? And then, uh, yeah, the attempts at meet day. Um, so the for squat, uh, I did a 545 squat at RP9. Uh, squat in this last training block was probably the, had the least uh, improvement in terms of singles. I did squat 500 for five, which was a big yeah. uh, rep PR. Um, unfortunately, you don't test your five rep max. Uh, but my singles, um, so my last meet was, was 550 at RP10. I did 545 at RP9. Um, moved faster than the 550, it's six pounds less. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, uh, and then deadlift uh, 600 on a, on a uh, Ohio power bar. Uh, and then uh, bench, my best uh, pause bench, I think was three, 335. Uh, 350 touch and go for this past training block. Um, and then at the meet, uh, my squats didn't go as I'd like. Um, I missed my third attempt. I actually uh, was a bit conservative on my second attempt because my first attempt wasn't great. Um, and then after my second attempt, which was nearly an RP10, uh, I went with a small jump, ended up missing my third attempt. Yeah, bench. I saw your 515 opener and just looked a little slower than yeah. you, especially if you have 500 for five yeah. or uh, the speed. I've seen you squat, uh, you know, 520, 530, yeah. uh, just looked a little heavy. Yeah. Uh, um, so missed my third squat and then bench went as planned, uh, 320, 330, 340. That was all good. Uh, and then deadlift, um, same thing as a squat, uh, missed my third attempt. Um, there, whenever people, you know, for the past few days since the meet, people have asked me how it's been going or how the meet was, and I, I kind of give two answers. The positive answer would be uh, my bench press was a 22-pound uh, meat PR. Uh, my deadlift was a 14-pound meat PR on my second attempt. Yeah. Um, and I forget what the, uh, I think it was like an 82-pound meat PR for my last powerlifting meet. That's not including my strength lifting meet, the, the yeah. press. Uh, so huge total PR, bench PR, and deadlift PR. And uh, I really don't care about placing and powerlifting, but I did get first place out of seven competitors in the 110. Yeah, which that's is, something Which is though. whatever. Yeah, uh, so that, from that, like looking at that, just saying that, people are like, wow, well you killed it. Yeah, if you uh, get 80 pound meat PRs, yeah. and you compete twice mm -hmm. a year, mm -hmm. you're gonna be really strong really quick. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the other side of it is, it was a crappy day. I didn't perform as I would have hoped based on how my training cycle went. Uh, and I just had these numbers in my head that were completely realistic numbers because yeah. all these numbers I'd done in training. Um, and I just couldn't uh, perform, so that, that upset me. 
um, to say, you know, that would lead me to say it was a, it was a bad day. I have uh, two th- thoughts on uh, maybe why some of that happened in my head. Uh, the PRs on the bench and deadlift and not your squat. Is you there don't any- know me. I know you, bro. Uh, <laughs> is there any idea, uh, whether you or if you've talked to your coach, uh, why things maybe didn't go as you wanted, even though they, generally speaking, again, they went pretty well. 80-pound meat PR is mm-hmm. solid. Um, right, right, right. You can't but, really get mad about that. Uh, but if we, if we ignore, ignore meat that. PRs and we just say, let's look how your last three months yep, went. Yep, yep. How, how yeah. did you perform? Yeah, yeah, or even, even the last eight weeks, uh, yeah. you know, four weeks. Uh, things were going well. Uh, things were slowly lined up. Um, but peaking for individuals, uh, there's really good posts. I think it was Chad Wesley Smith saying the individuality of powerlifting is very, very small mm-hmm. um, compared to uh, specificity of the lifts itself, volume being a driving factor, all these things, right? Managing right. fatigue uh, and percentage of priority. Um, so I don't want to say like, what have you should have done that I shouldn't have done? Yeah. But what do you think maybe you could have adjusted in the last eight weeks if anything calls out to you? Um, I don't know. I haven't really even talked to, sat down and talked to Austin. He says we're going to you know, do a debriefing, but it was, it's like, the meet's over with, just chill out. We don't, you know, I didn't like get on the phone with him right away and yeah, say, yeah, what yeah. happened? It's powerlifting. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I haven't really talked to him about it. Um, I'm sure he's got a bunch of thoughts in his head as to how we can change this. Um, but the couple of the easy things to point to would be, um, oh, you were, you were overtrained. You were too fatigued going into it, but I felt fine. I had no, no injuries, no nagging pain, yeah. uh, leading up to the meet. There was nothing that I wasn't. My body felt fine. And volume was uh, reduced somewhat from the last eight weeks. Right. So yeah. there was there was no, uh, in terms of like how I felt, yeah. I, I felt fine. Um, uh, so it wasn't that. And then, it, you, you know, some would say that uh, uh, maybe you tapered or peaked too soon, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't think that's the case either because I was training that week. Yeah. Uh, lifting, you know, fairly heavy singles. Um, and then all the, all the likely excuses of life stress, you know, leading up to the meet was was not nothing in particular. Um, yeah. I slept fine the week leading up and the night before. Um, some people might say, you know, whenever you tell someone about having a bad meet, everyone's really friendly about it, and they always try to like reach yeah, yeah. for things like, oh, you know, how'd you sleep the night before? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Did you did you eat did you eat breakfast? Yeah, yeah. You're probably nervous. Oh, but, you, uh, you had Cheerios, so, not cinnamon toast yeah, crunch. Yeah, uh, and and one of them was. Uh, Dude, it was a long day, you know? And I was like, yeah, but that doesn't explain my squats. I would actually think that the, was first thing uh, that's in the morning. True too. You know I mean? Yeah, like, the, so the worst. And I think the not, meat, uh, the meat, not a long meat conditions were pretty decent, right? 80 degrees yeah, it was out. Good. Uh, moved not too fast, not too slow. Yeah. I've been to way faster meets and I've been to way longer meets. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a good pace. Yeah, so I really don't have uh, uh, any excuses. And I don't, uh, and the only, the only logical thing I can say right now is not really an answer, but it was just. It was just yep. not my day. Which uh, happens. You do have to, like you said, show up and perform and execute. Uh, I, I often quote Jordan, who says, "We don't, you don't just mail in your attempts. Yeah. You have to go do it." Uh, and I, I don't know. I just, I actually, like when I would look, you know, uh, look myself in the eye that day, I did not like feel that great. I didn't have like much behind my lips. I didn't have much in my legs. Yeah. I was trying to put on the right song. I was punching myself in the face, and it just wasn't doing anything yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's, I guess, I'd chalk it up to. A, you know, an NFL receiver dropping a wide open pass, and you're like, dude, how did you drop that? Yeah, yeah like, Jerry Rice know, has dude. dropped the pass before. Yeah, and he's the best of all yeah. time. So, um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have an, uh, a reason right now. But uh, that's that's like right now, a couple days after. Yeah. Uh, on my next meet or after my next training block, I might look back and in retrospect say, I think this this is what I. Yeah, this was this too much. Was this was too little. Maybe. Yeah. And sometimes uh, the things that I have in my head had nothing to do with your training because. Uh, one, I think Austin's a smart guy. Uh, two, I didn't analyze your training by any means. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that pops out in my head, um, maybe why you had a more successful bench um, and deadlift uh, meet than you did a squat meet, mm-hmm. is that one, I think you're a very efficient squatter and have been for a while. Mm-hmm. And maybe the lift that you've trained with the most frequency, talking last 10 years, uh, compared to the other two. Yeah. Um, where like there was diminishing returns. Kind of diminishing returns and the skill acquisition of you focusing last eight weeks or 12 weeks, 16 weeks on the bench compared to an overhead press mm-hmm. or even strongman stuff. Yeah. Right. So there's faster skill acquisition within those weeks on those lifts. Mm-hmm. And even the deadlift 
deadlift bar, um, where I don't think the deadlift bar gave you a PR, but I do think that you focused in on the conventional deadlift with a bar, not an axle, not a truck, not a whatever, more recently in the last year, two years, than you did in the last 10 years, right? right? So when you, when you go m m uh, macro to micro, those things are still new mm -hmm. compared to your squat, which you've been efficient at. And yeah. if, you, you know, I think you'd probably say the same, the best lift you do, whether it's the strongest or not, because mm -hmm. I think one of my best lifts uh, is probably my squat in terms of my form, mm -hmm. but in poundage, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you, I would probably say the same, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So maybe those play a role, obviously, uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't be PRing, right? Uh, and there might have just not been a day or whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, but I agree that when you don't look, uh, when you look too soon to now, and if you don't do meets too often or test too often or whatever it might be, you have no idea. Yeah. Ma maybe you need doubles a week before or singles a week before. M maybe even mentally you need those things and not mm -hmm. physiologically. Yeah. Uh, and that would be the last thing that I would bring up, which is the only thing I would say everyone's a snowflake for, which is the mentality going into a meet. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I have it down, I think just because of sports is something I was really good at. My high school coach taught me a lot about visualization and things like that. And I know what routine I need to be to turn it on to get in my flow for that day. Um, and everybody might be a little bit different and training has to do with that. For me, I like to, I like to train kind of submaximal where like, oh shit, dude, I just smoked 600 here. I know I'm gonna get 620 at the meet. Mm -hmm. Where others say like, oh, if I never touch, touch 620 in a training, I can't touch 620 in the meet. There's mm -hmm. no way, you know? And so I think those things are a little more snowflakey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, my, yeah, I think that um, my deadlift has definitely been trending up. The reason I say it's a bad meet is because I pulled 600, which was huge for me, uh, in the gym on a Ohio power bar, which does make a little bit of difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so just to not do that at the meet was frustrating and not even like budget off the floor. You yeah. know? I was just like pulling and it was just like, fuck dude, uh, I'm done. But uh, uh, so that's why I was upset. But looking back, like my best deadlift before working with Austin was, in a meet was 518. Yeah. Next, the first meet with him was 540. Second meet was 571. Which is perfect. This was 584. So it's it's trending nicely. So I don't want to say that like, oh what what the fuck nothing's working. Um, so yeah. But the, and then the the thing about the uh, the singles at the higher intensity, um, I had one week. I think I think one week maybe two maybe last two weeks was a squat single at RP nine, which is like. 96%. Yeah. Uh, everything else was, for the leading up to it was, you know, way out was RP7, yeah. RP8 for the majority of it, which is 90, about 92%. And a so it's like, not, you know, it's not that. That's like, do your triple for yeah, one yeah. rep. Um, so it wasn't that I was like, you know, grinding my face off. No, no, I meant uh, uh, mentally for that, not uh, physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant mentally that for me, if I, uh, handle like a one rep max in training, then mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, well, that's the best I could do with a meet. Right. Rather for me, I'd rather crush 90% rather yeah. than grind 95. And yeah, that's yeah. where that snowflake, but physiologically, uh, which hopefully you guys know by watching his channel, my channel, that uh, one rep at, and at RPE9 is a lot less taxing on your body than probably uh, five rep at RPE9, mm -hmm. like in terms of recoverability. So right. for you to do a single, who gives a shit? Yeah. If you're doing max out, tens and fives three days out that might be something you need to look into <laughs> yeah yeah um I, I just think i think the best way to explain it would be that i just didn't perform yeah uh, happens which happens yeah so. especially in this this sport the more specific you get almost the harder it is because you can't adjust things like mm -hmm. jordan if his jumper's off he can get to the rim and dunk on somebody uh powerlifting if your legs are gone you are done yeah, <laughs> yeah like you yeah. are done there's it's, no nor no tricks to pull out yeah when you think about a whole training block you're, I mean, it's it's not uncommon. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's you're banking on like out of these three or four months, this will be your best day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's not. Yeah, so. yeah, it's almost impossible to say. And that's yeah. like again, if people want to say, oh, he undertrained or he overtrained or he underpeaked or overpeaked, maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's 24 hours difference, but mm -hmm. I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> like the chances are that Monday he would have smashed. Uh, highly unlikely. Right. Yeah. I uh, and it doesn't like negate all the progress I made right. in that whole training block. Um, it was just a local meet, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's not like I had, uh, I'm not even like a qualifying total on the line. It wasn't worlds, yeah. you know what I mean? It wasn't uh, anything that meant anything more than a local meet. And I really want to do well, of course. and I'm not saying, I'm not like brushing it off and saying it wasn't a big deal, um, but still made all that progress. Yeah. And I've actually done those lifts 
which is satisfying to me. Yeah. Uh, just kind of things that I didn't do on the, the uh, satisfaction, not to U-turn the whole conversation, but that's a big thing I talk about why I don't like to compete. The mm-hmm. feeling you have right now. Yeah. Because you, yeah, 80 pound meat PR, which is fucking good. Yeah. And you're still like, nah. <laughs> like, yeah. that's how I am. Like, yeah. if I if I hit every number I was supposed to, or I planned to, or even five, say, I hypothetically hit five pounds over everything I wanted to, I'd be like, yeah, I'm supposed to do that. Yeah. And then if I don't, if I underperform by even a pound, I'll be like, shit. Mm-hmm. So either way, I'm never like fully mm-hmm. fulfilled. And that's why for me, uh, gym training is just what drives me more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's not that that's, yeah, gym, gym lifts are not important. Um, but uh, I it think- It is if you're an IPF overlord. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, I think that it's nice to have like some object, objective feedback yeah. to actually go compete. You know what I mean? It's the same as- Of course. I don't know, wanting to like, being a track and field athlete and wanting to race against actual people yeah. instead of just the timer, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so there is like, and being with all the guys from Untamed Strength, yeah, uh, I just wanted to like do well with all of them, you know. And like I actually told, uh, I told them this morning, um, they were like rooting their, cheering their asses off, screaming and yelling. And you, those of you guys that were competing, one of them's right here, that's why I'm looking at. But those of you that like, they were actually competing. Yeah. And it's hard to be in, emotionally invested in someone else when you're competing. Yeah. But like in between attempts, yeah. they're screaming their ass off. For me, you know what I mean? And so so that adds to it. Like when you don't do it, you're like, fuck man, everyone's sitting here like yeah. cheering, wanting me to do well, yeah. and then you miss it or you give up and they're just like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So it sucks, but uh, Yeah, shout out yeah. to Untamed, that's something I noticed uh, right away and I talked to you, uh, Connor, right when we showed up. I said, these guys travel pretty good. Even though it's maybe only 45 minutes away, yeah. like probably more than half the gym showed up just to kick it. Uh, yeah. There were four or five guys competing, but a yeah, bunch of people were just kicking five, it. five, long day. Yeah, 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 it is. And they're all there the whole time. They're all cheering, so that was really cool uh, to hang out and see you guys all lift. Any closing thoughts, buddy? That's it. Alan will be back. I will not, but he will be back. Yeah. Talk to you guys next time.